All right. So let's do more examples of quadratic equations. I'm in section P3, looking at problem 16 on page 31. And 16 is the problem x squared minus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Now, our first step is to get everything on one side, but that's already done. Everything's on the left-hand side. But I'll go ahead and write that down anyway. And just put a check mark by it to indicate that's already done. Now, I can solve this however I like. You know, factor, quadratic formula, completing the square, whichever method I so choose. Well, in 2.1, we did some completing the square, and we'll do quadratic formula when it's necessary. But at the moment, this thing can be factored. I can see that because I've done thousands of these before. And that's basically what it takes to have that kind of insight. And it gives me an excuse to demonstrate more factoring examples. So I'm going to try this uh, X method that I've seen students use. So we write A on the left, and in this case, since we don't have a number, in front of x squared, we can assume it's 1, because 1 times x squared is still just x squared. We don't change anything. c, the last number, the constant, is 4. So 1 times 4 gives me 4. So I'm looking for factors of 4 which will add up to a minus 5. Well, if I took something like minus 1 and minus 4, minus 1 plus minus 4 add to a minus 5, and minus 1 times minus 4 multiply to 4. Let me write some of this out. minus 1 times minus 4 equals 4. So it satisfies both our conditions. It going down, adding down, adds to the middle number. Multiplying down multiplies to the same thing as multiplying across. So I use these numbers to decompose this, to make this larger, so I can do factoring by grouping. So x squared minus 1x, but minus 1x is just minus x, minus 4x, and then plus 4. Let's double check everything's the same. x squared's the same, 4 is the same, minus x minus 4 is minus 5x. So, I ask myself, what's in common with the first two terms? Well, 2x is multiplied together and 1x. So that means there's an x in common. Pulling 1x out of x times x leaves me with x. Pulling 1x out of minus x leaves me with minus 1 as a placeholder for the minus x. Now, if I look at the next two terms, I have a 4 in common with both of them. If I just pull 4 out, something's going to go wrong here. And what goes wrong, so this is a 4, that's a 1. 
What goes wrong is the simple fact that what's in parentheses here is not the same thing as what's in parentheses here. So I don't have anything in common with both terms. But instead of pulling a plus 4 out, if, the, if things don't work out, if the things between parentheses aren't equal, pull out a negative 4. You know, pull out a minus 4 instead of a plus 4. If I pull out minus 4, then pulling minus 4 out of minus 4 times x leaves me with x. And pulling a minus 4 out of 4 will leave me with a minus 1. Because minus, one time, or minus 4 times minus 1 will be plus 4. Now the things in parentheses are exactly the same. This is what we want. So we can now factor by grouping, which is what we're doing at the moment. We can finish it off, because now we have an x minus 1 in common with both terms. And when I ignore the x minus 1, my first term is now just x. And pulling out the x minus 1 in the second term, I'm left with minus 4. Now that I've got this completely factored, and since I factored, this won't be the same if you do any of the other methods, but if you choose to factor, your next step is to set each factor equal to zero. So we're going to set x minus 1 equal to zero and x minus 4 equal to zero. So it's either the case that the first number, x minus 4, is 0, or the second number, x minus 4, is 0. Which would mean that x would have to be 1 in the first case, or x would have to be 4 in the second case. And that's our solution. Alright, let's take a look at another one, which unfortunately is not going to be able to be factored. And I can tell that just by looking at the answer. So if I look at 20, x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. Start off, I need everything on one side. That's already done. So step two is factor quadratic formula or completing the square. Now let me show you, I already said I know that this won't factor but I know it's a problem determining whether something will factor or not. So let me be naive and say, gee, I want to try factoring on this and see what I get. So if I try this x method, a is 1, c is minus 3. When I multiply those together, 1 times minus 3 I get minus 3. Well, the only factors of minus 3 are plus and minus 1 and plus and minus 3. You know, I could try, let's see, 3 and minus 1, or I could try minus 3 and 1. But in either case, 3 plus minus 1 is 2 when I add it up. And that's not b. b is minus 1. But when I add up 
minus 3 plus 1, I get minus 2. No factor of minus 3, no nice factor at least, of minus 3 adds up to the middle number, b. So this tells me factoring doesn't work. So I could either try completing the square or quadratic formula. I've already done a number of examples in 2.1 and completing the square, so I'm going to try doing quadratic formula. But choose which one you feel most comfortable with. If you prefer completing the square, do that one. If you like quadratic formula, then whenever I do completing the square, you do quadratic formula. Stick with what's familiar to you. So quadratic formula is the following minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac and all of this is over 2a. Now we already identified a as being 1, b as being minus 1, and c as being minus 3. And I'll go ahead and write them write those things down so it's clear what's going in here. So when I plug in these numbers I get minus b which itself is a minus 1 so minus a minus 1 plus or minus square root of minus 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times minus 3 And then all of this is going to be over 2 times a. So that's 2 times 1 in this case. Minus a minus is a plus. So this is just 1. Minus 1 squared is also 1. Minus 4 times 1 times minus 3. Multiplying by 1 does nothing. So this is just minus 4 times minus 3, which is plus 12. Now then, 1 plus 12 is 13, and 13 does not have a nice square root. It's a prime number, so I can't simplify it any further. I can't pull out any perfect squares, which happen to be, uh, which happen to divide nicely into 13. So this is it. These are my two answers, 1 plus square root of 13, and 1 minus square root of 13, uh, both of them all over 2. All right. So, ooh, video's running long, so I want to go through, but I do want to go through one more example and it's going to be another nasty quadratic formula one. So I'll try to go through this one quickly in the interest of time. In this case, our first step of getting everything to one side is not yet satisfied. So, I'm going to distribute the 8, that's 8y squared minus 8y. Now that everything is distributed, I can subtract y squared from both sides. So, 8y squared minus y squared is 7y squared. And then to move the 3 over, I'm just going to subtract 3 from both sides. Because that'll make the right-hand side 0. Now everything's on the left-hand side. If you try the x method, you're going to realize that this does not factor nicely. 
So again, I'm going to stick with quadratic formula. Minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of this being divided by 2a. So this is b is minus 8. So this is minus a minus 8 plus or minus b we already said was minus 8 and we're going to square minus 8 then we take minus 4 times a 7 times c minus 3 that's all underneath the square root and then on the bottom of everything we have 2 times a 2 times 7. So, minus and minus 8, that's going to be plus 8. So we have y equals 8 plus or minus. Minus 8 squared is the same as 8 squared, it's just 64. Minus, then we had 4 times 7 is 28. 28 times 3 is 60 plus 8 times 3, which is 24. So 60 plus 24 is 84. And we add two negatives multiplied together. So two negatives make a positive. And this is all over 2 times 7 is 14. So 8 plus or minus, let's see, what is this? 4 and 4 is 8. 6 and 8 is 14. Ooh, we're just 4 off of 12 squared. So that still doesn't count. So 148 does not have a nice square root. But I believe 148 has at least some nice factors. Let's see. Can I pull 4 out? 4 will go in 37 times. 120 plus 28. Yeah, it would be 148. So square root of 148 is going to be square root of 4 times square root of 37. So this is square root 4 times square root of 37. 14. So this is 8 plus or minus square root of 4, that's nice, that's 2. 37 is prime, we can't break that down any further, so we'll just leave that as square root of 37, and divide by 14. Now it may be tempting to do something like, you know, cancel 8 and 14 and make it 4 and 7, but you can't just cancel the 8 and 14, and you can't just cancel the 2 and the 14. What you have to do is do something like pull a 2 out of the numerator. 2 times 4 plus or minus square root of 37. And all of that is divided by 14. Now this 2 can cancel with this 14. Because what's connecting it in the numerator it's 2 times something divided by 14 because it's connected by times it can cancel out with the division in the denominator so this leaves me with 4 plus or minus square root of 37 and taking 2 out of 14 leaves me with 7 And that's the answer.